Hello all and welcome to another AWS Tech Talk with James. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'd like to uh, cover off um, AWS Control Tower, do a bit of an overview of AWS Control Tower, uh, what, what it has to offer and, and why I think that you know, everyone should start using it to, to manage and, and, and build out their, their AWS landing zones. Um, so let's get started. So AWS Control Tower uh, is a uh, it's an offering from um, from AWS uh, um, which enables you to to build uh, Control Tower uh, sorry build landing zones um, for greenfield environments to, to AWS best practices uh, or um, enable you know integrate Control Tower with your existing landing zone. Uh, and then enroll counts to be, to be controlled under Control Tower. Um, so it's really a, a managed service from AWS, which uh, helps you to, to build out and uh, manage and control your AWS landing zone to, to best practices. Um, so I guess the first thing is, what is a, a landing zone? So a landing zone uh, essentially is, is a, conf a configured, secure, scalable, multi-account uh, multi-resource, uh, you know, AWS environment based on best practices. So this is where you start building out, uh, you know, looking to build out your, your multiple accounts, your production, your dev, your UAT, uh, your separate networking accounts, your security accounts, your, um, you know, shared services accounts, uh, you know, and, and being able to build out that multi-account landing zone structure uh, in, in order to be able to build and develop on AWS. Uh, you know, it's a great starting point for, for new development and experimentation, uh, you know, new services, the like. You know, it's also a starting point for migrating applications. So if you're looking to, to migrate uh, existing uh, on-premise applications into AWS, you obviously want to have your, your landing zone uh, already, already deployed in AWS, and that's going to be your, your landing point for, for your migrated applications. Uh, it's also an environment that allows for iteration and extension over time. So, you know, you're always wanting to be iterating your landing zone, whether it be, uh, you know, applying extra controls, uh, applying extra accounts, uh, guardrails, security and the like, or even uh, extending it out, you know, globally. So you're starting to use uh, multi-region for, for different applications. Uh, in the past, um, you know, customers or users of AWS were, um, you know, left to their own sort of devices to build out their own their own landing zone uh, that typically looked like a sort of a, a master account uh, with a couple of, you know, production dev UAT accounts underneath that uh, and then allowing for that consolidated building up, um, you know, consolidated billing uh, under one, uh, one, one bill for multiple accounts. Uh, you know, then, then the there was a whole notion of, of AWS organizations. Uh, they did develop a landing zone, um, you know, platform using different different tools, uh, but it was still a you know, custom and manual process. Um, and then obviously they've now launched Control Tower. Um, so Control Tower is not a service itself. It's an overarching management platform for multiple services within AWS um, to be out, that, that are used to be able to build out that um, that that cloud yeah, that platform. So having said that, let's uh, have a chat about some of the uh, Control Tower key features. So as I said, it's an automated landing zone with best practice blueprints. So you know when when and we'll, I'll cover this off a little bit later around what what AWS Control Tower deploys and and what it um, you know what the landing zone looks like. But it, it is very automated, and AWS have you know put in a lot of the best practices around security, control, management, and the like. And they are constantly iterating on that as well and, and releasing updates for, for Control Tower, uh, which, which you can apply. Uh, you know, guardrails and policy management. So this, you know, allowing you to, to control your, your multiple accounts, your, your environments, uh, you know, and, and putting these guardrails in place to really be able to to, to monitor and, and you know secure your your environment uh, and make sure it's you know from, from a central location. Um, account factory for account provisioning. So this allows you to to provision AWS accounts you know as you need them um, from a central location. Uh, it also allows you to 
do some customization when it comes to provisioning these accounts. Um, so when you provision a new account using Account Factory, it, uh, it actually uses AWS Service Catalog, uh, which goes out and, and, and builds those accounts. And it, it automatically adds the guardrails, um, you know, the, the monitoring, uh, control, uh, cloud trail monitoring and the like. To, so all that is automatically provisioned. Uh, and it pushes out all the, the correct permissions and, and the like the control that Tau needs to be able to do that. So all that is, is automatically provisioned for you. You can also take that one step further uh, and do some of your own customizations. So, you know, whether you want to be able to push your own roles or whether you want to be able to push uh, your own VPCs or if you want to be able to push, uh, you know, different uh, policies and the like to, to your accounts when, when you deploy them, you can customise uh, what that, the account factory deployment looks like. Um, so similar to, to being able to bake uh, an operating system image, you, you can actually bake your account, account provisioning. Uh, there's two ways of doing that. Um, there is the, the um, configuration uh, for uh, account, uh, account factory or control tower, which is using CloudFormation. So that's uh, CF uh, CloudFormation for, for control tower. Um, that allows you to have your different um, CloudFormation templates in, in, in a repository such as code commit. Uh, you can then add your, you know, what, whatever features you want to be deployed with your account at the, in CloudFormation, uh, such as IAM roles and the like. Uh, that then runs through a pipeline and then updates the artifacts that, that um, Account Factory uses to deploy those accounts. The other method uh, which was released uh, at reInvent last year was the account factory for Terraform. Uh, so similar concept, uh, but this allows you to, to use leverage Terraform uh, and, it, uh, and it, for all your um, customization of your accounts. Uh, and then it also allows you to then obviously, you know, push, de deploy new accounts via, via code as well, that infrastructure as code. Um, and the, the other benefit with uh, account factory for Terraform uh, you you can have uh, global config you know customizations which you know you can obviously define those that, that happen across all accounts that, that are being provisioned um, but then you can also have break that down into having you know um, per account or or per organizational unit uh, customizations as well um, Control Tower also um, has a dashboard a central dashboard for visibility and actions so this this is going to show you your all your accounts, your organizational units, what actions are being are being made within Control Tower. Um, it's going to show you whether your accounts and your, you know, and, and any of your um, OUs, you know, whether any accounts have, have got any uh, actions that needed against them, or if they're, you know, if if they have any um, uh, I suppose whether they're compliant with or non-compliant, depending on the rules that, that, that you put in place. Built-in identity access management as well. So again, AWS, it leverages AWS single sign-on. Um, Pre-configured log and audit access to accounts. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, it does uh, pre-configure all your log and archive and audit access into its own accounts. It, it, it pre-configures all its control tower, config rules and the like. Um, Built-in monitoring and notifications. So again, it, you know, it, it deploys its own SNS topics. Uh, so you can get emailed uh, notifications, default notifications, but you can also customize that as well. And then as I mentioned, it, there are also automatic updates that are provided. Um, so whether new, guard, new, new default guardrails get updated uh, or anything like that, um, that's all automated and you get notified of that. Um, so this is what the control tower landing zone looks like. Uh, so obviously we have our management account um, so you have two options. Um, you can either deploy this as a brand new uh, Greenfields landing zone. So deploy a new management account uh, and then, and then um, set up an organization and then deploy Control Tower from there. Or you can deploy it in your existing master account uh, using, um, you know, using your existing AWS organization. Um, there are you know, better pros and cons of both. Um, and there are, if, if you are looking to do it within your um, existing organization, there are some, some checklists that you need to run through uh, and a few things you need to, to do uh, before you enable Control Tower. 
Um, again, if you are doing it in your existing account, any sorry, in your existing organization, any existing accounts that you already have deployed, um, when you deploy Control Tower, they won't uh, automatically come under control of Control Tower. You need to enroll those separately um, after you've deployed Control Tower. Same as your organization, existing organization units as well. Um, so as we can see here, what does uh, Control Tower actually deploy? So it configures this AWS CloudFormation stack sets, which it uses for when, when, when you're deploying your accounts, and then it, it, it deploys the AWS service catalog. Um, portfolio for, for Account Factory in actually uh, deploying that, building out those accounts. Uh, it leverages AWS organizations uh, and then creating OUs, uh, and then it also um, leverages AWS single sign on. Um, so when you do provision uh, Control Tower, it will um, ask you to. Um, uh, it, it does provision, uh, as you can see here, a, a login account and an audit account. Um, up until recently, um, you had to um, create new accounts for those, uh, but they've now made an up AWS have now made an update where you are actually able to um, to leverage existing log centralized logging accounts or central centralized or, or uh, audit accounts if if you do already have them in place. Um, and again, you know the logging account that's where your account baselines, your, your cloud trail, etc. Get sent, and then you know, or the audit account is is you know where you get your security notifications, your security uh, cross role accounts. Um, you know, you might you'll set up uh, guard duty uh, as as the uh, administrator in that account and security hub as well. Uh, and they have their own OUs, uh, and then obviously you can build out your own OUs, and then you know either enroll existing accounts or provision new accounts using the country, uh, account factory. Uh, for the rest of your workloads. Um, so I mentioned it uses AWS single sign-on. Um, so when you deploy Control Tower, um, you will need to set up AWS SSO. Uh, so AWS SSO provides a default directory for identity. Um, AWS single sign-on also enables federated access management across all accounts in your organization. Um, so you don't need to either you don't no longer need to set up identity providers per account or you know, uh, set up uh, role switching per accounts. Uh, it, it's all controlled through AWS single sign-on. It does come with some pre-configured permission sets such as admin, read-only and write roles. Um, and then it also, uh, you know, again, you can also integrate it with, with any uh, other third-party identity providers such as Microsoft Azure AD or Okta. Uh, one thing to note here is that if you already have an identity provider set up in an existing and, and you're going to deploy Control Tower in an existing organization, uh, when you do enable this, you won't lose access via your old methods, um, such as role switching or you know, any uh, legacy or pre-configured identity providers, you'll still have that access. Um, it just means that you know, you obviously want to start phasing that out and then leveraging um, the single sign-on. Uh, so guardrails. So it, Control Tower also allows you to, you know, it, it does deploy um, some default guardrails. Uh, there's quite a few guardrails um, that they are, and these are sort of split into preventative. So, you know, it prevents policy violations using security control pol uh, policies or detective uh, guardrails and detective, you know, detective policy policy violations using AWS config rules. Um, so again, this comes down to the landing zone best practice. Um, you know, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, guardrails. Yeah, majority of the guardrails are mandatory, as, as I said, um, they can be split into they either mandatory, strongly recommended or elective guardrails. Um, a lot of the mandatory guardrails um, are around uh, you know, preventing you from making changes to um, control control tower resources or control tower um, you know, uh, roles, IAM roles, etc. Um, but then obviously, yeah, you can then bring in your own mandatory guardrails, uh, and then you can have those as strongly recommend uh, guardrails, strongly recommended or elective as well. Um, guardrails can be applied to an organizational unit. Um, so it can be applied at the root of the organization, they can be applied at the organized, separate organizational units, 
um, or they can actually be applied at the account level. Um, I wouldn't re recommend applying them at the account level just because you, you do it doesn't scale uh, and you do lose that kind of centralised uh, management of your guardrails. Um, so here are some e uh, example guardrails. Um, so for example, you know, you, you'll push out a guardrail that, that's going to you know, make sure that uh, you know, it detected guardrail to make sure that MFA is, is enabled on the root user. And you can see that's strongly recommended. Uh, you know, you'll have another detective guardrail that is going to disallow public read to access to S3. So, being detective, if if you um, if you if it does find uh, an S3 bucket that it's got public read access, you you'll be notified of it immediately. It doesn't matter what account it's in. Uh, preventative, so enable AWS config rules all regions. So this is mandatory. So obviously this this doesn't AWS. Uh, control tower when it does provision account it will set up AWS um, uh, config uh, and and, cl and um, cloud trail uh, and it will uh, you know, and it won't allow you to change that um, so that obviously people can't get in and you know, disable the rules or, or disable the, the cloud trail monitoring uh, if they're going to do anything that they shouldn't be doing uh, and then also preventative integrating cloud trail events with CloudWatch logs mandatory. Um, and again, you know, there are detective, and they, these are sort of more elective um, guardrails. You know, for example, you could set one up that disallows Amazon S3 buckets, you know, that are not uh, version enabled, uh, again, and disallow uh, actions on, on S3 buckets, delete actions on S3 buckets with MFA. Uh, again, these are elective, and they can be also be detective roles. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a um, Control, you know, the, there is a sort of single pane of glass for, for managing your AWS control tower dashboard. Um, you know, you're looking at, uh, it, it sort of gives you an overview of what's going on in your landing zone. Uh, so for example, here we can see we've got three OUs, we've got 34 accounts. Um, we currently have 28 preventative guardrails uh, and, and 12 detective guardrails enabled. Um, it, it will also list, so depending on your detective guardrails and preventative, it will show you your non-compliant resources um, across all your accounts and all your regions. Uh, so this is really great to see this one place. Uh, it will show you your organization units and, and within your organization units, if there are any accounts or resources that are, that are non-compliant. Uh, and then it will also go and show you your accounts. Uh, as you can see on the left-hand side, you know, we can we can view our accounts and our organizational units, uh, same as we can see it on the organization dashboard. Um, but then obviously we've got our guardrails, user and access management, and then we've got our account factory feature for being able to deploy accounts. What are the benefits of Control Tower? So, you know, it allows you to centrally provision accounts and resources. And, you know, it, it allows you to centrally control your shared resources uh, you know, and, and actions and regions, et cetera. It provides best practice around security, uh, you know, and you know, secure and audit your, your environment for compliance. Um, you know, having that centralised um, control over your landing zone. Uh, it also optimises cost and identity. Uh, you know, able to centralise your cost management, identity, be, uh, you know, be able to identify any cost saving measures across your your uh, your, your landing zone structure. So. Uh, I, I would uh, I would highly recommend thinking about using AWS Control Tower to, to manage your manage your landing zone uh, if you haven't if you're not already using it um, and you know if if you are looking to build out a new landing zone I would I would do it um, would not hesitate to use AWS Control Tower uh, but even if you already have your an existing landing zone in place I, I would start to highly recommend to start investigating what what it would take to to bring that under the control of AWS Control Tower. That was a quick overview of AWS Control Tower. Um, you know, if, if you are interested, there's there's plenty of links uh, to plenty of documentation uh, on AWS. Uh, but again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.